tonight on Debate Amongst Friends, we will be discussing week one of the NFL, the good, the bad, and the ugly, and a recap of WWE Backlash starting now. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen of the internet. This is Debates Among Friends, live on Mixler. Like us on our Facebook page at Debates Among Friends. Tonight is the 19th episode of this podcast. We apologize for the technical delays, but as always, we're locked and cocked and ready to drop some knowledge. I am the professor, and as always, joined by my side is the doctor. Doctor, how are you doing tonight? I'm doing pretty good. How are you? You know, doing pretty good. It was raining outside earlier, but I would say the sun shined, but, you know, the sun kind of went away because it's nighttime, but I digress. Doctor, we have ourselves a special guest tonight. We do. We do. Uh, we we usually have Senior October, Mr. October himself, but I mean, we got a different we finally, guest. We finally got Senior October barred from the building. You know, so many fangirls that kept coming up to us, telling us, ooh, we want Mr. October. We're like, no, not this time. It's not happening this week. (laughs) Instead, you're going to get J5. J5, how you doing today? J5, how you doing? I I see you there. I see you, J5. We we have J5 in the studio, but, I mean, I think he's being kind of shy right now. Hey, hey. (laughs) I'm good at you. There he is. Doing What's going good. on? I'm happy to be here. Can you hear me? We we can hear you just fine. I can't for see you the first time, but thank, two thank thumbs up. I'm ready to do this. <laughs> thank, thank you for coming out from behind the <laughs> chair. We understood how shy you was. It is a podcast. But no, not don't me. worry about it. The doctor's going to take care of you. I don't know so much about that professor cat, but the doctor got your back. <laughs> absolutely, absolutely. I mean, so we're going to get into this week one of the NFL, the good, the bad, and the ugly. I mean, where should we even start? I mean, let's just pull the Band-Aid off and talk about the ugly. I mean, I'm just going to start off by saying Cleveland Browns, please. Can we start with the Cleveland Browns? So, let's just understand this. So, the Cleveland Browns traded their number two pick to the Philadelphia Eagles, right? Who got a stud quarterback and a young man with the last name of Wentz, correct? That is correct. So, it's my understanding that this gentleman went on to have a great and phenomenal game. Um, And here we are now. They get RG3 in the off season and he gets hurt move. he gets hurt on the, the first, first game. game i looked at him and i said this guy is, is finished i, I mean, mean but is he finished or is it just a streak of bad luck no he's finished because what's going to happen is the browns are going to go out there they're, they're going to go and get somebody different, clearly. Um, I did see a few people. One name that was thrown out there today that I did see was Colin Kaepernick. Um, oh. Could you imagine if the Browns traded for Colin Kaepernick? That would be one of the best moves I can ever see to make in, like, Cleveland Brown history besides getting rid of Johnny Football. I mean, like, and I said that. <laughs> I said that last week. I said they might as well have – and rolled out with Johnny Football because Absolutely. I just never believed in RG3 and him getting hurt week one after they traded away a, a, a solid starter in Wentz. I mean, he had a pretty solid game and it just stinks right. that, you know, they got stuck with RG3. Right. I kind of think that, like, on the back end of it, Philly's like, hey, look, we just got away with, like, bloody murder. Absolutely. Uh, RG3 really just can't get a break. And I feel bad for the kid, you know, coming from Baylor, you know, actually changing that program around. I think J5 has now decided to auto tune a little bit. <laughs> We're gonna have to. We're gonna have to 
take a quick break from J5 real quick we'll continue on with just a doctor and myself <laughs> but back to the RG3 situation we're, we're, don't worry about this it. live TV ladies and gentlemen we're moving on we're moving on <laughs> Oh my goodness, man, it's too funny. <laughs> the Bates Among Friends is brought to you tonight bless. by Stella! Oh, twow. Oh, twow. Get that from the grocery store. Very oh, nice, goodness. crisp drink. Oh, that had me crying. A great, cool summer evening. That had me crying. Um, <laughs> um, but Cleveland, Cle I mean, before J5 got this <laughs> auto tuned, um, <laughs> he made a good, he did make a good point. <laughs> I guess J5 would be for five seconds on the show. <laughs> <laughs> you know, 60 minute man, my friend. <laughs> so, that's what the show is. It's 60 minutes. Uh, you got five seconds of it. And that's okay. <laughs> that's okay. <laughs> um, but, I mean, Cleveland, really, I mean, my goodness. That is so terrible. Their luck is so terrible. Think about it. They struck out with Trent Richardson. Uh, they struck out with um, now Johnny Football, and now they're gonna strike strike out with RG3, and uh, that is just so unfortunate. It is. It is. Um, but also, and the main reason why J5 was on the show was to talk about his Cowboys. Oh, oh here we go. Still part of yes. The Yes, uh, it's, it's right. <laughs> now, you know what I said? This, the, the Cowboy Giants game was right in the middle of bad and ugly. I mean, it was like uh, it's such a good defensive. I, I can't even say defensive game. It was just a hey. It was a bad um, execution game. Yeah, and whatever was, happens, happens. <laughs> right, right. Now, I believe in Dak Prescott. The professor thought that hey, they might have been overselling him, and you know maybe building up his space mountain more than it it should be because he is a rookie. Oh, the professor also wasn't giving him any preseason buys or passes, saying that those are preseason games. He didn't believe in him going into the season with that that hot streak. And I said, well, give him a break because he did play. And a great Mississippi State offense. I thought he did a great job at Mississippi State. He played um, one of the best conference in college football. He did. I completely agree with that. However, and, my argument with that was how many uh, other quarterbacks Kyle. who played in the SEC didn't true. play well when they went pros. That's all I'm trying to say. And that's so a let's good point. the brakes a little bit. No, no, it's it's, football. It is college football, but that, and that's a good point. I mean, the thing that I found interesting was I felt like. And I know we talked about this, but I felt where the difference between the preseason and that game we saw, whatever that was that happened, and I'm going to get on the Giants in a second, but where in the world, not Carmen San Diego, but where <laughs> is Des Bryant? Okay. That was okay. the ultimate question. Jason Witten showed up, you know, and I'm going to get on Zeke in a minute too, because that was some terrible running out there. But where in the world? Was Des Bryant throwing right, up the X's? J five yeah, on. I'm throwing the X's up right now. Let me tell you where Des Bryant was. Des Bryant was in the game, but did not have the opportunity to produce the way he should have. The one thing that I do give Dak, Dak played a hell of a game. He but did. when you are a rookie quarterback, poor quarterback coming out first game of the season against a NFC East rival. There's no way that quarterback is throwing the ball 45 times. That's true. No way. No way. Now, you're going to go to Elliott, and I'm going to hold my comments for that because I have some comments for that Ohio State Buckeye, oh, right? <laughs> uh. but, but Des Bryant needs to be more involved in the game, and I think that was a part of the game plan. They tried to take a shot early. I give them that. But listen, dude, if you're going to put the ball up there, you're throwing to a top three receiver in the league, it got to get there. And the preseason looked be. great. That's the thing. And the preseason looked great. And the professor, he's holding his tongue there, but I know he wants to talk about Janoris Jenkins Island uh, oh, over I there. Was, <laughs> that was going to be my question. So, J5, as usual, the people are talking in my ears. They're, they're screaming. In his ear. They're telling me. They're saying, Best Professor Best John Gotti. I said, what? They said, you need to ask that J5 character. Is Janoris Jenkins a Des Bryant stalker? 
Mm. That's two times and a year, too. That's two times a year, and hey, I'd rather take it two times than all 16 games, just saying. <laughs> but uh, I won't say that. I'll say that Des Bryant, ha- Des Bryant has his kryptonite. And I don't think it's so much of the actual player. I think it's so much of the defense that they're playing against. So that, that's that. how I would look at it. And I was so upset because, and I'm again, I'm again on this Giants defense because they're part of the bad only because they, of, they're definitely part of the bad. Yeah, uh, that bad part. <laughs> but also, I mean, their defensive pass rush really didn't get too much pressure on Dak as much as I thought they would have for 150. You know, I guess it was we'll just say 80 to 90 million dollars. You know, it didn't look like they got an 80 to 90 million dollar pass rush even with a healthy JPP with no club on his hand. I didn't fact, feel like. Let's pull up the stats. Uh, Dak Prescott only got hit twice throughout. The yeah, game. I felt like he was clean. I thought he was poised. He played a great game. Absolutely. The major issue was Alfred Morris ran better than Zeke. Zeke. Yeah. Wait, what? wait, wait. Before we go there, before we go there, the other question I just got in into the chat right now. Uh-oh. About a hundred people listening right now and they're asking me to ask J Five the same question. Does does it matter that even though Dak had a hell of a game, as you so eloquently stated, Uh-oh. does it matter because the Dallas offense couldn't produce touchdowns? They only got one touchdown, but every single one of their points were field goals. Does it, does it constitute as a win for Dak or a loss? It counts as a loss for Dak. And let me tell you why, because it's a loss for the Cowboys. As a quarterback, no matter if it's a rookie, no matter if it's a veteran, your team loses, you lose this. So to be honest with you, I'm not going to sit here and sugarcoat that anyone deserves credit for that game on the Dallas Cowboys side because it was just we didn't get the dub, period. And being football-minded and playing football, like I said, Dak played a great game. But let me tell you this. Dak must have got a phone call from Tony Romo right before that game and basically told him, <laughs> hey, when all fails, go to win. Just go to win. Because I, Jason yeah. Witten he did, got he the did. ball. He over to me he overthrew the Jason Witten. If not, he even overthrew the Cole Beasley. He, I would agree with that. He definitely, he definitely threw the Cole Beasley. Come on. Yes. And, and then Jason Witten is getting uh we're we're third and like thirteen or something and, and Jason and Jason Witten gets the ball five yards under. Yes. We did. have to go for the first down. You put it up there. If it's an interception, it's an interception. Don't worry about stats. Get the win. I can agree with that. Now uh, uh, wait, now, now uh, that uh, could be trending worldwide. Uh, Hashtag Dak stats. <laughs> <laughs> now, I mean, I, 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 I'm here as a gentleman. <laughs> I mean, the one thing that I did like about the Cowboys, though, the offensive line did a great job protecting uh, Dak, giving him an easy transition into his first regular season NFL game. Now, they're typically really strong in the run, and again, as I mentioned. Alfred Morris looked like the regular old Alfred Morris. Uh, he was hitting the holes. I'm not going to lie. Zeke looked a lot reminiscent of a Trent Richardson out there. Oh, Bouncing no. around, the not the hitting the holes. Right oh, and I was Let's like, what is, Zeke, what is Zeke doing out here? Wait, wait, wait. j Pod threw a flag on the plate. Let's Obviously, this is, this is not part of the show. This is brand new. J5 threw a flag on the play. What's your flag? There's no flag on that play. My flag on that play is, listen. Personal foul. (laughs) 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 Ruffing Z. I'm at the game, and as I'm at the game, to my right, I have two Cowboy fans, and to the left, I have three Giant fans. And as I'm I'm sitting there, and and they put Morris in the the game, I'm like, you know what? He did the first run, it was like, okay, like five yards. I'm like, wait, that's what we need. We watched, he watched Morris all preseason tear it up, tear it up. Now, mind you, coming from Washington and even coming off an injury, he's there, and it's like he's behind a better offensive line. And this guy got yeah. to move. He's not going to run away from you. He's going to run through. Yeah. Now, what Zeke showed us, and this is something I was telling a few people, Zeke showed us against uh, Seattle that, hey, I might can do this. Mm-hmm. Zeke had seven carries that game. It was, I might can do this. And mind you, the play that Tony Romo got hurt was the play that he actually, like, undercut, you know, to see he coming down on the blitz. Mm-hmm. So he's, this, that was a, a vision of us. I might can do this. I might can't. Now, mind you, once again, it's only the first game, so we still have more to see. Oh, but cool. I did agree. Alpha Marvel should have more carries. You have to exploit the defense for the openers that they give you, and that was one thing that the Cowboys failed to do. I completely agree, I agree. with that. I, I think that, um, that, I mean, I don't know, because I, I thought that, first and foremost, the Giants defensive line, they're highly paid. They're highly skilled. 
I was very disappointed in their pass rush uh, and their ability. No, oh, that's not even sugarcoated. They ain't do nothing. <laughs> they didn't do anything, and I mean, I guess they were neutralized. Like I said, the Cowboys' offensive line is great, but when you go out and you spend the amount of money that they spent to upgrade this defense, I, I, they don't. And I, I think that's where your com- the professor's comments during the game about the Cowboys managing the clock. Because I mean, he had texted me. He said, "Hey, Doctor." This is great. They're doing this clock management. The Cowboys are doing this great clock management. And I made the point. I said, hey, you know, the Cowboys are going to work the clock. They're going to try to, you know, keep these guys kind of tired, you know, wear them down a little bit. And then the fourth quarter, they'll try to score and win the game. And he said, and I quote, all this time, uh, this time management isn't really doing them anything if they can't get any touchdowns. Now, Mm -hmm. do you think... Dak and the Cowboys are going to have a problem scoring touchdowns with the, with the, I guess the next game coming up. Well, the next game they're playing the Redskins, right? Washington and Washington. I mean, I, I think they get some touchdowns in Washington. Washington, I, I, if they don't, Washington we're gonna have a problem. Yes, it's gonna well, be I mean, a if big. They don't, if they don't, you know, they can always go to old reliable Mister Butt Fumble himself. Oh my God, dude! Uh, uh, no, no comment. All I'm gonna say is once we once we signed him, all I kept saying was Mark Sanchez. Yeah, are you terrible? Absolutely terrible. I mean, but enough of that. I mean, I don't know. Let's talk about some of the other. I would like to. Let me me tell you one last thing about Dak. The one thing that I put out there about Dak is the fact of, and this is honestly speaking, I seen him throw the ball better on the run. The boot legs is what works, and he need to stay there. And the one thing I will say is that I was pretty surprised that they didn't run the option with him more. Um, I think they only ran maybe the two, option like two, three times. Yeah, I was so shocked that they didn't run the option. Um, I thought they should have definitely utilized it a little more. You know, Zeke is used to it. He's used to it. Get him a, a chance to move around a little bit more. Um, I thought they could have did a better job with that. But ultimately, I thought they it was a good game. Um I just thought it was just a matter of, hey, who's going to score last, basically. And the Giants' defense just didn't – they didn't they, wow they didn't me. They didn't bring the mustard. Yeah, they and the Cowboys, the, de- the Cowboys' defense, they need to go back and just bring in um, Greg Hardy. Uh, that's, that's, that's who you say it on. Oh, time. my God. Just bring <laughs> him back. Let him disrupt the, the locker room. That's fine. They need somebody that's going to be out there rushing the passer until uh, Randy Gregory gets back. Because that pass rush was just non-existent. Um, but, my God. Oh, my God. And uh, shout out to Victor Cruz for getting his first touchdown of the season. Welcome back, Victor. Mm. Victor that Cruz. salsa could have broke down, too. <laughs> oh, oh my. goodness. But let's talk about a good. And when I say good, what I really mean is... Oh, my God. <laughs> oh my god, that was the funniest video for the entire week one. That right there. That was my highlight of the whole week. Oh, my if, goodness. If, 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 the, if those out there don't know what that was, that was from the L.A. Rams and San Francisco 49ers game on Monday night, the late, late game. Because yes. obviously no one was watching. It turned into a bar burner. It but really the did. highlight was a drunk fan decided to run onto the field, bare-chested, and <laughs> oh my Kevin goodness. Harlan, who is quite literally the man of the year because yes. of this. Yes. Made the play by play and it was completely awesome. <laughs> oh my goodness. But that I mean that goodness. was really, really good. That was really good. What I'm gonna say the good to me was the four touchdown quarterbacks. We had some sure? four touchdown quarterbacks, including my man at J Boo wins. Yep. Famous Jameis out there. Tossing four touchdowns in good company with Drew Brees and Andrew Luck. Now, mm-hmm. 
I watched this Bucks game, and I'm going to tell you, even if I wasn't a Bucks fan, some of these throws that Jameis made were phenomenal, if I can Uh-oh. say that. Uh-oh. You don't want to say that. Now. It was phenomenal. I mean, they were pr- dealing for dimes out there. This was Trent Dilfer's going to be talking Richard about this. You're doing this well, too. It had to, he had to be talking about him. I mean, but Drew Brees definitely was out there. I think they had a 99 or 98-yard touchdown. 98-yard touchdown pass, yep. I did watch some of that Indianapolis game. Um, I found it kind of crazy that he threw four touchdowns and they still lost by four. But I think they're still trying to work on getting that run game together. I love Frank Gore, but I think it. I, I think he needs to let it go. Washed. <laughs> yeah, he might be. He might be about finished. Um, but that would be my good. And another good, not to jump on, continue to jump on this Tampa Bay bandwagon because you know I can stay on it for a long time. But Quan Alexander. Alexander, yes. Wow. Seventeen tackles, two for loss, a sack. The guy which, was all which over would the be place. Be about a fifty to sixty point game in my fantasy league if I had one. Absolute monster. I'm going to go out and say, again, as I mentioned on Facebook, if he stays healthy, watch out for him as a defensive player of the year candidate. Um, I didn't really see too many running backs do anything. Uh, we did see an A.J. Green sighting. <laughs> Dominating. I think somebody said he burned Darrell Revis. But once again, that was the issue with Darrell Revis. Him and Richard Sherman are both great press Covers. They are. Corners. They're both great press cornerbacks. They are. The issue is... Definitely good. Once they get past 15 yards. I mean, I don't know. I, I would give Revis more of, of the man ability over Sherman. I think Sherman's a better cover three corner. Cover two, cover three corner. He can play some man, but I think he needs that over-the-top help. Usually, you put somebody on Revis Island, and it's going to obviously... There have been some, uh, you know, some tourism in Revis Island. They've put put up some hotels because some people have been staying, and they've been dominating in Revis Island. And it's clearly what happened with AJ Green here for 180 yards. Um, great on fantasy as well. Too. It is like great on fantasy. Tourism keyword. Yes, he's out there and he's he dominated out there on the <laughs> island of his own. Yes, absolutely. Right, we keep talking about all the good stuff. Let's talk about our surprise of week one. So, what was your biggest surprise of people? Week one. J5, uh, you go first. My biggest surprise of week one actually is how Jacksonville actually played against Green Bay. Oh, yes. uh, I think yeah. right now Green Bay is trying to define themselves. They're trying to co- become one team again. Um, throughout the last season, you know, they were kind of broken up a little bit, you know, with the injuries and things like that. And I think they're trying to find their identity. Um, but, you know, just going off of how Green Bay is and basically, you know, just the legacy of what they do up there with them cheeseheads. Yeah, I was actually shocked with uh, Jacksonville, and I'm really looking for Jacksonville to do big things this year. Um, and, that, and if I can go to the NFC, honestly, the NFC, what was big for me besides my Cowboys losing to those cheat mm. <laughs> men. Um, I'm actually going to throw out there the fact that, uh, once again, how, how Philly came out and, and dealt with that game. Uh, you know, I, I'm really interested um, to see what the NFC is going to do this year, um, only because I think that they're, it's going to be it's going to be different. It's going to be how the NFC was a few years ago when teams are, you know, 10 plus wins and actually scratching and fighting to actually get in the playoffs to win a division. So uh, that, that was my biggest thing for this weekend. Absolutely. Yeah, I think there's some good points. Um, I think for me, the one thing that stood out to me, I would say one thing would be. The, I guess the growth of Jameis Winston put it more into perspective for me, but not seeing Marcus Mariota have a good first game out against Minnesota. You know, and Minnesota actually winning the game with Sean Hill at the helm. I mean, that's pretty, that was pretty shocking to me. But also some of the lower scoring games uh, really, really stood out to me. The Bills in Baltimore. I actually picked up uh, in DraftKings, Mike Wallace, who went to the Baltimore Ravens, I, I knew that Mike Wallace and Steve Smith would be a great tandem together. And Mike Wallace actually have a, had a really, really good game. I knew that Joe Flacco would get him the football. Uh, and I think they're going to be really, really dangerous moving forward. I think that that outside of the Browns, of course, 
I think that particular division is going to be really, really good. But also, the Dolphins holding yes. the Seahawks to 12 points was a really, really interesting game. Um, I... I was shocked to see that they had been no real scores. And then this final score of 10 to 12 really shows that, hey, the Dolphins are getting better. Or, hey, maybe the Seahawks were so focused on, hey, are we going to kneel? Are we going to hold hands? Or are we going to sit down? Are we going to not come out? You know, oh, we're just going to stand. Okay, all right. They were so consumed into that, they didn't come out to play football, and it really showed. Absolutely. Dr. Doctor. Thank you, Doctor, for that one. For me, uh, first of all, I'm going to shout out to the sergeant out there for sending us a comment about this debate right now, talking about some football. He said, Jacksonville versus Green Bay was so unsettling for the future of the conference. Oh, my goodness. Wow. Wow. But to quickly say, my biggest surprise was, and I'm sorry no one else said it, but Arizona losing to the Patriots. You know, I left that up to grabs because I knew you wanted to go there. I felt that, you know, the doctor has reads, as you very well know. And I said, I know the professor. I know the professor. I know he wants to talk about Garoppolo. I can feel it deep down in my spirit. He wants to go out there. He wants to talk about New England. But I'm going to let you go. It's not even about Garoppolo that I wanted to talk about. It's the fact that Arizona looked so strong last year. But that was last year. The Bucks looked weak. A lot of teams looked weak last year, too. and, 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 And they were my pick to go to the Super Bowl. I, I'm going to go out there and say that. They were, they, were, they was my pick to go to the Super Bowl. I thought they was the most complete team heading into this year. But obviously, they have a lot of holes in their defense. So, we'll leave it at no, that. Only week one. Only week one. It is only exactly. week one. It's I a think, long I mean, season ahead of us. And it's only two points. And didn't, I think they missed a field goal or something at the end, didn't they? They did. So, they I mean, the, yeah, so the Cardinals, I mean, uh, they obviously could have won the game. I think that defense is going to be fine hopefully not fine this week against the bucks because i don't even want to see that i want james to continue to flourish um but garoppolo he handled his own he had a pretty pretty solid game um i don't think they missed tom too much but to your question in the off season i don't think that garoppolo is going to be taking tom brady's job um, he did go 24 for 20, 24 for 33, you know, 264 yards, a touchdown, no interceptions. That's that's the way New England plays, probably through a lot of short dunk and dink passes. And then they played solid defense. He won them the game, and Tom's going to come back, throw 50 touchdowns like he normally does, and he's going to come back with, uh, as mad as ever. <laughs> and, um, you know, I'm sure um, Gronkowski will probably rest up waiting for Brady to come back. And they're going to go ahead and trying to dominate just because he was suspended. I mean, that's just the way he works. It's very unfortunate. unfortunate. One one thing that I want to add, and we have not spoken about this all night yet, get Josh Norman more involved. Washington, I don't know what you guys are doing. Get him involved. You can't pay a guy all that money to come over to your team, one of the best corners of last season, on a Super Bowl losing side, but you can't pay him all that money just to play one side. You have to get him involved. Football is about making adjustments. Get them involved. I'm just going to say this, and we're going to move on to wrestling right now, but I'm going to say this. I'm surprised that J5 said that, knowing that his Cowboys is going to Washington this week. But well, moving on. Well, here's the <laughs> thing is that the, I guess the, the Giants – That's funny. The Giants were calling him out, quoting and citing that he was avoiding Antonio Brown. I mean, that's pretty – you know, he's a good corner. But that – Carolina defense is something special, and we saw that this week, you know, on Thursday when they played Denver, you know, even even though they didn't get the W, that but, defense, and to this very moment, I still am so upset we did not draft that middle linebacker that they have. Um, I know we got to move on. I'm so mad we didn't draft him and we want to draft him, Mark Barron, but he's a monster. That defense as a whole. Doing the monster in St. Louis, though, well, LA. LA now, yeah, I get it. <laughs> yeah, but they had to move. Him. Who, who chose? You know, who would have thought to move him from safety to linebacker, and he would just do all good. But hey, I'm just saying. I mean, I picked him up last year in my fantasy, and I mean, just to to, to say that he was a godsend for me was an understatement. I he definitely. helped. He helped build up Space Mountain to tear. <laughs> <laughs> I definitely understand. Championships. Championship. Um, right, so on, we're moving quick. on to some WWE. 
backlash and he just played the million dollar man ladies and gentlemen so the kickoff match shall we start there with baron corbin beating apollo cruz there was one part that stuck out and i think we talked about this the Uh, angle slam the angle slam (laughs) <laughs> he pulled out the angle slam, and we said, and I quote, hey, the angle slam used to win championships with, for Kurt Angle. He did the angle slam, and he did the standing moonsault, black, the backflip, and he still did not win this match. He still didn't win it. I'm he got hit saying, with the look, end of days. He's just another, once again, this is the same problem. As King Ross liked to say, new era, same old stuff. That's so crazy. Uh, But I'm really happy, though. I will say this about the event. The first match, the WWE SmackDown Women's Championship, the inaugural champion being crowned. Obviously, we... uh Uh-oh. Obviously, we got Becky Lynch winning the title. Anyone else stand out? Anyone else stand out to you? You already know where I'm going. Uh, Naomi? Yes. uh, Definitely stole the show. Uh, She did... A spot where she did a springboard plancha off the top rope onto the six oh, women yeah. wrestlers, which was an awesome moment right there. But then she came back and had that one little snafu. Yeah. <laughs> you know. And I, I, I think that's the part he's going to talk about. <laughs> I mean, I was very impressed by her, her entrance. I thought, you know, everything looked great. She looked great. Um, the one thing that was, I mean... Oh, Natalia, all you had to do was push her legs down and they could have tried it again in two minutes. Oh, they, they could have tried it again. But Natalia oh. stood there and it made it look so stupid and fake at that moment. Stupid. Um, Natalia, oh yes. my God. <laughs> but I was you really, just, uh... yeah, I, I was, but I was impressed by Carmella a little bit. Um, her ability to, I feel like she's trying to go heel almost uh really well, they're trying to make her a heel because of her upcoming feud with nikki bella because they don't want nikki to be a heel right but right. she left as a heel as a heel um but you know she's she's john cena's girl so you know how that goes what john she's says gonna try to keep her on top yeah and you know how that goes <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. Moving on. on. Moving on. It, was a, it was a short. It was a short. Yeah, that was, was a, a short good one. Show. That was a good one. And yeah. We're not talking about Cena. Oh. oh. <laughs> so what did you think? What do you What do you think about these Usos? You think the Usos are out here? Do you believe their their ability to be healed? I can Don't believe it. Die. My issue is it's too late for this guy to believe that they could be healed. Like they should have done it two months ago. I mean, yeah, they didn't. didn't I mean, they didn't have the face paint on. They didn't. They didn't come out. You know, it's funny because they didn't come out hyped like they normally did, and they were fighting against the hype bros. I thought that was really, really hilarious. Already, you know, and I really, really liked the hype bros. Their energy. I think Mojo Rally, once he develops his move set, might be okay. He might have to turn on Zack Ryder. Woo 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 he's woo. Gonna, he's gonna have to. He's going to have to. Um, so so wait, are, wait, wait, hold on. Are you saying that Zack Ryder's the Marty Jannetty of the Hype Bros? He's gonna Whoa. have to. Be. Oh my goodness! Whoa. Did he <laughs> just gonna, say that name? He did just say that. He did. J five through the barber As you know, because you listen to the podcast, we got the millions <laughs> and millions <laughs> of the Beta Monk frienders out there. They know that the professor and the doctor and this show, sponsored by Stella Otoise, Stella is always going to be controversial, and we're going to not hold back, and we're going to say the things that, as we like to say about Mr. October, make the ladies scream as they move it on. <laughs> oh, my goodness. But, I mean, I do believe that. I think that, um, I don't know if it's going to be as bad as Janetti. I don't think anybody could be as bad as Janetti, because that was really, really bad. The whole barbershop, you know, Brutus. That's what made it so epic. Yeah, but nobody's doing that anymore. I mean, I do believe that. I mean, it, it's bad enough that, that there's daily, you know, articles about who's the next Marty Janetti or, like, the top ten Marty Janettis. 
Oh my goodness. <laughs> I mean, just thinking of the the Marty Janettis, I, I would have to say if there's going to be another Marty Janetti out of all the tag teams that are out right now, American it will Alba. be Enzo Amori. I was gonna say uh, American Alpha. No, it's gonna be Enzo Amori. Well, but everyone knows that already. But like, that's it's not really that surprising. But that's just what it's gonna be. It's it's gotta. That's the way it's gotta be. That's the way it's gotta be. It's not that like when when Cass finally turns on Enzo, and we all know it's gonna happen. He's gonna drop the Empire I'm elbow. I'm gonna be surprised. He's gonna drop that stupid elbow that you love so much. I think it's great. And, and we're gonna get to that. Let's finish up. Let's finish we up. Got the the, we got We talked about that already. Keep going. <laughs> I mean, any other matches you want to talk about? Because everything else is pretty much forgettable for me. Uh, well, we, I mean, we we could talk about me. Huh? We, we could talk about we could talk about your favorite wrestler of all time oh, currently yeah. right now. We can't. And his, there's and there's his no favorite wrestler. There's no favorite wrestler. He won the, the uh, big belt. You must be talking about Rhino. <laughs> <laughs> That's Rhino's my favorite wrestler, I guess now. Big, <laughs> he won the big belt. Rhino. <laughs> Of and we're not talking wrestler. about that Rhino character. We're <laughs> talking about, we're talking about Bray Wyatt. <laughs> oh, Bray. AJ he beat Ray Styles. New York and be a, be a, a count out. <laughs> 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 oh, my goodness. And AJ Styles won the WWE World title from Dean Ambrose by first giving him a low blow, which is awesome. And then finishing off with the doctor's favorite finishing move. Which is, not awesome. Which is not <laughs> awesome. One of the most because unlikely moves. The doctor has, has such a hate. I not even hate. a dislike. And nobody gets it. And nobody gets it. Nobody else gets it. Like, I, I say it. You know, nobody ever responds. I mention I mean, it. I mean, we, we, wait, but wait. But we have someone in the podcast right now. Let's ask him. Have you seen the style flash? I mean, do you, I, do you, can you say wholeheartedly that this is a move that should be done by a grown man? Rocking a soccer mom haircut? <laughs> soccer mom. <laughs> only, only if there's eight kids in the back, orange slices passed out, and oh. juice boxes given away. It's terrible. <laughs> like, it's a terrible move. I hate it with a passion. If I saw him, I would tell him, man, you could be so phenomenal if you had dropped the clash, man. It's so terrible. <laughs> But the one thing, so that I don't go on a tangent and talk about the Styles Clash for the rest of the show and end the show, because I will. We still got some time. I mean, uh, not if I talk, talk about, about the, else you want. Not if we, I we talk, talk about the Styles Clash. Because <laughs> <laughs> I can talk. You know, just saying that I'd rather see him do the whoopee cushion than the Styles Clash. I'm just throwing that out there. The oh, phenomenal, wow. the phenomenal whoopee cushion. Wow. Okay. <laughs> we're, we're gonna have to cut the podcast exactly. short, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you very much for tuning exactly. in tonight. <laughs> exactly. But the one thing I did want to point out and bring up, and this is the thing that you know, not just because he does the Styles Clash, but the one thing I did want to point out is that what in the world happened to the WWE building guys up? I know you have NXT. I know you have this developmental plan. But what happened to building guys up and actually giving? genuine pushes. You know what I mean? Like, genuine pushes. I have two words for you. John Cena. John Cena. Oh, my God. Wow. It started with that, because he continually buried people for so long, and for a great span of time, I believe for like two years, it was John Cena versus Randy Orton, every single flipping pay-per-view. And it damaged the reputation of wrestling to the point to where people who should have gotten chances didn't get those chances. And now they're trying to make up for it right now. But the issue with that is that they're bringing all these people who came from other companies in now. AJ and that's Styles. The... Oh, my God. Your boy. Our yeah. boy, Shinsuke Nakamura. My boy, Bobby Roode. Glorious hashtag. I mean, but my problem Joe, and you like Samoa so... Joe. Yeah, Samoa Joe's pretty good. I mean, my main problem is... I'm going to pick the mic up for this one. Uh-oh. <laughs> <laughs> my major... My major problem is it's like AJ Styles just got there six, seven months ago. Dean Ambrose has been there. I was okay with Roman winning the first time, but after he lost it, I was just like, uh, just forget it. You know, but AJ Styles coming in, beating John Cena was cool. Nobody really cares. But then beating Dean Ambrose is kind of like, 
why the heck did we subject ourselves to Dean Ambrose in the first place when we could have just skipped this whole reign completely? Like it's like what you did there, by the way. Exactly. (laughs) It's like let's go back and think about it. Like we, I think I mentioned this before. Kevin Owens beat uh, John Cena on his first match at in WWE. Then he went back to lose to him two or three times. Uh, It it goes back to it's like what the heck was the point? You know, what was the point of Brock Lesnar beating Undertaker for the streak? There's no point. So they're just doing pointless things. And it's like, what the heck is going on? It's a scramble now. I mean, right now, right now, and I think someone, I think it was Bleacher Report, but I don't remember the source. I apologize, people out there. I do if we have my sources. Anywho, uh, this article said this is now the indie's renaissance of WWE. It is. The reason why it's the renaissance is because all these people who are pretty big names outside of WWE are now coming in and they're getting these title shots and they get these recognitions and whatnot. But there's one little problem. They're old. They're older wrestlers. Yes. The doctor made this point before about Shinsuke Absolutely. Nakamura. I hate the fact that he's 30-something years old already. AJ Styles, 30-something. They're all older but now. As I, as I explained to him, the issue was, had they come 10 years ago, they would have never gotten the chance they have now. I'll that say one this. The one thing. WWE before compared to now. But the problem is, I would say that if they did come 10 years ago, AJ Styles would have skipped, which I did see this. Uh, I did see this in an article um, that said that there were wasted talent in TNA, and AJ Styles was number one wasted Absolutely. talent in TNA, along with Jay Lethal, uh, Samoa Joe, and a few other people. Um, the one thing, if they would have came 10 years ago, they would have skipped that. Um, Kurt Angle was another person had he not left. There are certain people that I think WWE should have just kept and held on to. I could get cutting some people. They, I think they hold on to people too long, you know. And the problem that I'm having now is that they have a lot of talent, too much talent. And I really, really, and truly believe wholeheartedly in the deep down depths of my soul here that really they're too much talent? yeah, they have a lot I think of talent. The issue is that they have they have a good amount of talent, and, and I'm not to you know be controversial. And oh, be, contra- you no, be, be controversial. controversial. Be controversial. Be yes. controversial. <laughs> But it's not the fact that they have too much talent. If they have the right amount of talent, it's just they have no direction to go with. And I think that's what comes down to talent, because you're going to see. Mean, I th- think think about it like this, though. The same people now starting to get these little pushes, like a Bo Dallas who, you know, was at an airport singing Lion King drunk off his rocker. And you know why he got that push. And we talked about that. The only reason he would have got that push is because he got that publicity. But the thing is, is that I really, truly believe, like Ryback, like... Um, Del Rio, Mm -hmm. you're going to see an exodus of mid-carders who are supposed to be more towards that heavyweight contending position. The issue with that was they kept having to job to these people who get a lot more money than them. And at the end of the day, it's all about money and respect. I mean, Rock said it best. I mean, Ryback is different. We know Ryback. We know Ryback wasn't getting paid. Well, he was getting paid because I think they were going to pay him about one or two point something million dollars. He just wanted other stuff that was going on. Yeah, he just wanted a title shot. He wanted T-shirts. He wanted all kinds of stuff. He wanted a cereal. He wanted the the, you know the Bootyo cereal with feed me more on. You know, he wanted a whole bunch of stuff. I don't think he was worthy. I didn't really like his character myself. Uh, We've been going on tangents for a while, but J5 hasn't really gave his two cents about anything. So let's ask J5 a question. The doctor and the professor. What's up? J5, the people want me to ask you, what is your favorite finishing move for wrestling today? Uh Uh-oh. See, I think that was a set-up question. (laughs) (laughs) That was a set-up question because me and the professor talked about this previously before going on the show. Now, right now, I'm gonna and hashtag this America. Uh-oh. Hashtag RKO. Oh, the RKO the can classic on you at any given time. And, and I'm telling you right now, that's one of the best, my favorite moves because the way it just attacks you, man, it is ridiculous. And I will go, I will go to the grave, to the grave, six feet under, saying I hope he doesn't come and RKO me. Hilarious. <laughs> all right, Kenyo, but you guys hit it on the nose, and I don't think that it's any more but just structure. 
um, Triple H really needs to go back to the drawing board. And um, I think w, everyone that's uh, leading that organization right now needs to go back to the uh, drawing board and actually start getting some structure. The one thing that I've, I seen like the attitude era and things like that be so good for us, not only because they had explosive fighters and wrestlers, but because they had structure going on at that time. You know, Vince did a hell of a job on keeping everybody where they needed to be. He once did. those guys got older and once those guys, you know, basically started going, you know, other places for other reasons and we had those other guys coming in, mm-hmm. it was more like, okay, this guy, and, and that's the thing, sometimes they promote too hard. They give us too much at one point and then we get, and that's what I feel the downfall was about Ryback. We got so much Ryback at the beginning, it was kind of like, well, I don't want to be fed anymore. Yeah, don't feed me anymore. <laughs> <laughs> it was some more, but, but the same thing is happening with Braun Strowman, though. Oh, God, wow. yes. Definitely. I mean, it's, it's, he's just been going through nothing but jobbers than freaking fighting Sin Cara. I mean, Sin Cara plus. plus. Right. <laughs> it always, but it's always going to be that. It's always going to be that they're going to push him. And if it's, it's kind of like, it's, hey, it's kind of like what they feel as if it's right for the organization. But nine times out of ten, it's not right for the organization. I thought, and I'm going to go on record by saying this. I Uh-oh. thought that you, Brian. You're always on record on the dates of my <laughs> That <laughs> Daniel Bryan was so overrated. Oh. So overrated. But yeah, let me know tell it, you, it's so good that you mentioned that because yes. me and the doctor had this talk, and we got oh enough God. time. We have a little bit of time. But let's talk about this right now. Let me tell you this: oh, I thought he was so overrated, but oh, when I saw this guy in pay per view after pay per view, and then go on the Monday night and, and everything I saw him, I said, you know what? I take all of that back. This guy has wow. to put this organization on his back and go forward with it. Unfortunate what happened, what's going on with him right now, but. That guy had what it would take, and I like the push that they gave him. It's just I think they could have gave a couple of more wrestlers that push, and uh, unfortunately they didn't. You already know who I think is overrated. <laughs> <laughs> if I'm not... who, who, well, you told me, but the people don't know this. The people should know. The people have to know. They want to know. I... Okay? The sergeant is hitting up my Facebook right now demanding me to tell you, to tell him who is overrated. I, yeah, Stephen A. Smith, like I That's think AJ Styles is overrated. As someone mentioned, all his form for all his forearms look like the phenomenal forearm. You yourself said that the calf crusher looks more like he's hurting himself than he's hurting the opponent, and that mm-hmm. damn Styles clash. Hands down. <laughs> Worst move in the post Hogan era. <laughs> Worst. Oh wow! Really? I really to say the post Attitude era because the no. elbow was still no post Hogan era. And the only reason I say that is because people were winning with scoop slams before Hogan started dropping the leg drop. <laughs> also, were one with a body press. It was a, a splash. And the splash. I mean, you, you got to keep that splash. And again, I would have taken any of I those. Mean, Rick Rude won with a neck breaker. It was a ravishing neck breaker. Jake the Snake Roberts won with so a I DDT. Posed... Shawn Michaels won with a super kick, and the Young Bucks have been using that for their entire match. I mean, come on. No one <laughs> should be using <laughs> the style splash. It should be banned as a worst thing. So let me this question. To the doctor and the professor, do you guys think that the WWE organization need to put some of their fighters back in training to start learning and producing more and different moves, finishing moves in their matches? Professor? It's ironic because we've also talked about that one as well off the podcast. I completely agree. I think we talked about that with Apollo Crews. Well, no, I mentioned that about wrestling, period, because a lot of the guys did the same moves. And what I mentioned was in the Golden Era, which is the Hogan Era for those out there, and about now, they do the same moves constantly every single week. They might throw in one, maybe two moves every quarter. Right. But the absolute era, they throw in a lot of new moves because they had to. Right. Because they had to compete against WCW and ECW. They had to be uh... top rated. And so WCW had those there, luchadors, like the luchadors exactly. flying all over the place. But I think that exactly. the, the conversation came up with because, you know, I said that Big Cass should be able to win with the Empire Elbow. Um, and I said that the Rock's People's Elbow, along with the 
um, shake, shake, rattle, knee drop, and the worm were all comical moves. But this seven foot monster Stop it. Stop and it. big cast Stop it. jumping up no. and dropping this empire elbow it's is not a move to win a match. Is it's not a pretty move to win a sweet, match. man. I mean, once again, if he did a pump handle slam, although now Bobby Roode does it, yeah, called the glorious bomb. But if he did like a pump handle slam, or as you mentioned, the jackknife, I would be all for it. I think he should be He has the look, he has most of the charisma. Enzo has 95% of the charisma between the two. Right, right. Which is why he'll... Like, if he did like a big, high octane, big move, then I could be on top of that. But we're running out of time. We actually have a question from the sergeant himself. Once again, he's been hitting up my Facebook. He's yelling at me. He's threatening me. He says, Professor, if you don't put this question out there, I'm going to get you. I'm coming he after. said, why in the hell Uh-oh. is Stone Cold Steve Austin on the cover of WWE 2K16. In in that respect, the person who's on 2017 for WWE video game as well, too. So how come these part-timers, these old guys, the people who have already retired, also in in his case, got in the ring already, how come they're on this cover? Why not someone like a Kevin Owens or Steph Rollins? Not Roman, because it's anyone to do Roman. I mean, I thought the people voted these on, like, kind of like, you know, Madden vote you know the madden votes i thought that people voted these people in like i didn't think they would just choose for the rattlesnake even though i mean they're pretty solid choices i mean i probably would have went with um a probably more well randy orton was hurt so you can't go with randy um mm-hmm. last year i would have been following the roaming even though i dislike everything they does i probably see i, I really and truly believe this wholeheartedly that Bray Wyatt should be on the cover of everything at this point because I'm just trying to figure out when the heck he's going to win at a pay-per-view like and I, I, I don't know did you ever check the stats on that he's like oh and freaking nine in the last uh, nine, nine pay-per-views like it's ridiculous so the answer to your question is never oh my god that's terrible <laughs> he's like the, he's the best and I think he's one of the better entertainers that we have out there today he's got the move sets I think he can carry a match. Uh, clearly, he carried Roman before Roman got his small push. Um, he carried many matches, and I really think that those are the guys that need to be at the top, the guys that can carry a match. Absolutely. It's, it's all about the money, man. If, if, you're, if you're out there buying these games for your kids or yourselves, you see Heath Slater or Roman Reigns on the cover. I'm not buying that. They might have put Stone Cold Steve Austin on the cover. I'm going after that, and I'm gonna say I gotta see what this guy is about. I gotta see what did they put him on the cover for? What's going yeah. on? It's so ironic that they didn't put so Goldberg on the cover, but I guess he's a, uh, I guess he's a downloadable co- character. I guess. But I think we're running out of time. Anything else, though, we can we can just have Nikki Bell on the cover. But we're running out of time, ladies yeah. and gentlemen. We don't have too much time to do our final thoughts. Although I am going to put a special shout out there to my boy Moose. Uh oh. And the Sergeant. Sarge. For tuning in tonight, as long as everyone, the other the beat among Freniacs. J Five. Anything you want to tell people how to contact you? You can contact me on Facebook at Jerry Wallace. <laughs> Typical. <laughs> and you can also get at me at uh, J522 at gmail.com. Awesome. Well, we're going to leave you with our track tonight uh, from Richie Branson from Ghost and Goblins 2, the album with uh, Mega Ran. This song is called 28. Once again, thank you very much for tuning in tonight. I am the professor. And I'm the doctor. And we'll see you next time. Peace and love. Deuces. Long ago when rap was just a hobby, I dropped out of college. Moved home with my mom and got a job arranging the racks at Abercrombie. Life was moving slow, like the walking speed of a George Romero zombie. And one day, everything would change. And the kid you used to know as Marcus Brown would never be the same. My mental state became unstable, but not insane. I've suffered a much worse fate, I've come to call it rage. 
I felt a sudden urge for violence that took me by surprise so I began to clutch my eyelids. The color red began to flood into my irids and that's when I realized this was not a typical virus. I became infected, no discretion, faint complexion, gained perception, long story short I became a weapon. My only dream was to attain perfection And that was the moment when this curse became a blessing I was destined to become a savage Far from average, I'm wreaking havoc I'm still a villainous evil bastard With a taste for disaster I'm scraping the plate clean, no need for napkins And I'll be damned if anyone asks me who is Richie Branson I've accepted my darkness I am not these rappers pulling skeletons out of closets I'm pulling them out of their pockets And no one can stop us Not even a couple of choppers Not even a tank if it was driven by Michael Dukakis I went from savior to nemesis don't play with me, it's not a game like zombies ate my neighbors on that genesis And I don't think they understand how brave my sickness is I killed the club but I forgot to save the witnesses I couldn't embrace the creep of life at first, I ran from it And that resulted in some sleepless nights and empty stomachs But when I tasted competition, I began to love it And so I started taking trips with body bags as luggage In 28 days we could start an occupation And in 28 weeks we could roll the nation And after 28 years of work and dedication now time for world domination yeah. In 28 days we can start an occupation And in 28 weeks we can rule the nation And after 28 years of work and dedication It's now time for world domination I'm just trying to maintain I'm a zombie with a taste for success instead of brains I'm forever deranged, rational, I will never remain I'm running the game like I've seen every level and stage I'm feeling like a final boss that's worth the meat meal I can't seem to shape this car cause my technique is ill I'm wide awake, the competition's sleeping still I'm okay with that, it makes him an easy kill See I'm cursing, I'm forced to be immersed in A lifestyle for the loops and curves, I call it curses I've given up on resisting my murderous urges No longer nervous when I'm cutting them up like a surgeon